Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking through a couple player props I like on prize picks for tonight's NBA slate on uh, Wednesday, March the 27th. Uh, we've got a big slate tonight, guys. I think it's uh, an 11-game slate, I believe. Um, we're kind of, I said this Monday, we're on this schedule where we have like a really big slate and then small slate, really big slate, small slate. Like uh, tomorrow on Thursday, there's only two games tomorrow. So it's kind of a weird schedule this week, but these big slates I do look forward to just because, you know, there's going to be so many props to choose from. And I've got three early picks, guys, that I like for tonight that we're going to share in this video. We're going to talk through these three plays, share why I like them. Uh, before we do get started, though, as always, if you guys do enjoy these prize picks videos, if they do help you out, make sure you hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you guys are new to prize picks, if you don't have an account over on prize picks, uh, sign up linked down below in the description or just use that promo code NOAH. When you sign up for prize picks, you'll get your first deposit matched up to $100. Um, and also, I do want to shout out Sleeper because we do have a partnership with Sleeper as well. You guys can sign up for Sleeper, uh, linked down below in the description. Or again, just use that promo code NOAH over on Sleeper and you'll get your first deposit matched up to $500. Uh, now, if you don't know what Sleeper is, they are a pick'em app similar to prize picks, similar to all the other pick'em apps you see around the industry. Really simple, easy to use. You just pick over or under on player projections. You build out an entry. You can make up to an eight pick entry on Sleeper. You can win up to 100x your money. If you guys do want to check them out, again, use that code NOAA. When you sign up, you'll get your first deposit matched up to $500. But uh, we got three picks to talk about, guys, for Wednesday today. Now, I do want to recap the two picks we gave out in Tuesday's video before we talk through today's plays. So Tuesday, really good day. Hopefully, you guys did tell. Both the plays we gave out Tuesday did hit. Draymond Green over 28 fantasy score. CJ McCollum over 4.5 assists. Um, both those plays cash relatively easily. I think Draymond went over his fancy score with like seven or eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. CJ McCollum wasn't looking good at the start. He, I think he played like the whole first quarter, had no assist, uh, but then he finally started racking up some assists, and I think he got his fifth assist like late in the third quarter, early fourth quarter. Um, so those two plays were relatively sweat free. Hopefully you guys did tail and made some money. That puts us now on a 15 and six run. So over the last uh, over the last 21 picks we've given out on this YouTube channel, we've hit 15 out of our last 21 picks. So it's been a nice run lately. Hopefully you guys have been making some money with us. Um, as always, if you guys you know want more prize six plays from me, I do provide those over on Patreon. Gave out six picks on Patreon yesterday, went five out of six. Unfortunately, Daniel Gafford, we had his over fancy score uh, and he let us down, but well, we've been doing well with our Patreon picks too. We went five and oh uh, the day before. We went five out of six yesterday. So hopefully you guys have been tailing, uh, making some money, both you know on YouTube and if you're in the Patreon, hopefully you've been making some money there. Let's try and keep it rolling uh, into this uh, Wednesday slate. So let's talk through what I'm liking for Wednesday, guys. Got a fantasy score prop I'm liking, and then two uh, points plus assist props I'm liking. So for the fantasy score, uh, right now, uh, at the time I'm making this video, we only have fantasy scores up for the Charlotte-Cleveland game, but there is one that I do like in this game, and it's going to be Jared Allen, um, more than 37 and a half fantasy score. And let's talk through why I like this play. So we, we just saw these two teams play a couple days ago, Charlotte and Cleveland. Jared Allen did go over this fantasy score line in that game, had 41.6 fantasy points. He wound up playing about 33 minutes in that game. Um, he did lose about three minutes due to blowout. He subbed out with about three minutes left. So had last game been competitive, I think Jared Allen probably would have played about 36 minutes. Now tonight's game does have a 10 and a half point spread. So there is a little bit of blowout risk here. But this game is being played in Charlotte instead of in Cleveland. So I think with it being played in Charlotte, that makes it... You know, a little bit more likely the Hornets are able to keep it close. Um, typically, you know, teams perform better when they're at home. But if we look at Jared Allen this season, you know, there's still there's still no Donovan Mitchell. And surprisingly, if you look at like Jared Allen's fantasy points per minute this season, they actually really haven't seen much of a boost without Donovan Mitchell. Now, if you look at his points per minute last season, last season Jared Allen actually got a bit a pretty big boost in his fantasy points per minute with Donovan Mitchell off the floor. This season, that re there really hasn't been much of a boost in his uh fantasy points per minute without Mitchell, but you would expect you know, there to be more opportunity for Jared Allen with Mitchell off the floor just because Mitchell is such a high usage player. So when you take Mitchell off the floor, that's just going to allow for you know everyone else to pick up additional usage. They can run the offense a little bit more through Jared Allen when you know they don't have Donovan Mitchell. Um, and even though they do have Evan Mobley back now, Evan Mobley has been on a minutes limit. I assume Evan Mobley will still be on a minutes limit today. In the two games he's played coming back from injury, he's played 21 and 25 minutes. Maybe Evan Mobley plays like 28 minutes today, but um, we should still see Jared Allen play, you know, low, probably to mid-30s minutes 
And this is a guy that has averaged about 1.15 fantasy points per minute this season. If you project him to play 34, 35 minutes, you know, this fantasy score line of 37 and a half does look a bit low, especially when you factor in this matchup as well. I mean, this matchup against Charlotte is one of the best matchups possible. Charlotte has been getting killed by centers really all season. They give up a lot of points in the paint. They don't rebound very well. So this is definitely a spot where Jared Allen is going to be able to probably, you know, get some putbacks, you know, get, get those offensive rebounds. Uh, this is also a spot where he should be able to rack up some blocks. Charlotte this season, um, they've been a team that's been getting blocked a lot. I think they're, in terms of, you know, what they allow to opposing centers, I want to say they've, they've been a team that's given, given up a lot of blocks this season. Um, let me take a look at that real quick. So, they actually, so they've only been about middle of the pack this season in terms of, you know, blocks allowed per game. But I want to say earlier in the season, Charlotte was a team that was getting blocked a lot. Um, but either way, you know, Jared Allen, he is one of those guys that can rack up those blocks. He can get steals. Those are really big for fantasy score because they're worth three points each. Um, we saw that yesterday with, with Draymond. Like Draymond Green, he was able to get two steals, which was, you know, crucial for him to go over that fantasy score. Jared Allen can have games where he gets two or three blocks. He can get a couple steals. Um, and if he's going to play 34, 35 minutes here, I think he's got a pretty good chance of getting more than 37 and a half fantasy score, especially in this matchup. And I want to say that last game, um, his fantasy score line last game in the same matchup was 39 and a half. Um, now, you know, Evan Mobley maybe plays a few more minutes today. They potentially could get Max Struess back today, but I don't think, you know, if Max Struess comes back, I don't think that really has much of an impact, if any, at all on Jared Allen. So I was surprised to see this line, see this line at 37 and a half when it was 39 and a half, not, you know, only two days ago in this exact same matchup. Honestly, I feel like this line should be 39 and a half again. So, at 37 and a half, I do like the over here for Jared Allen's fantasy score. That'll be our first prop for tonight. And then next prop I like is going to be a points plus assist prop. And we're going to look at Miles McBride, 18 and a half points plus assist. And I like the over here as well for McBride. So really want to highlight the last four games for Miles McBride because those are the four games he has started. And I assume he's going to continue to start until OG and OB comes back. Um, OG is once again out tonight, so you know, we don't have to worry about that. And with, with McBride in the starting lineup, he has been playing a just shit ton of minutes. If you look at the minutes he's played the last four games as a starter, he's played 43, 48. He literally played the entire game against Brooklyn. 43, 48, 44, and 47 minutes. Last five games he has started, he's played at least 43 minutes. He's actually played at least 40 minutes in his last seven games he has started. Um, he started nine games total this season McBride has. Um, I want to say that a couple of those games were without Jalen Brunson, but still, McBride has started nine games this season. He's played at least 36 minutes in all nine of those games. He's gone over this points plus assist prop in six out of those nine games. In the three games where McBride went under, he barely went under, put eight, put up 18 points plus assists against the Pelicans. He had 10 points and eight assists. He also shot three for 11 in that game, so it was kind of a poor shooting game. And then he put up 17 against Detroit, which was last game, had 13 points, 4 assists. And then against Denver, tough matchup, he put up 14 points plus assists, 11 points, 3 assists. Um, but McBride is going to play a ton of minutes here, even if this game turns into a blowout, which, you know, it does have a relatively big spread. Right now, the Knicks, they're favored by 13 and a half in this game. Even if this game is a blowout, we've seen... Tom Thibodeau willingly play his guys even in blowouts. And if you look at last game, last game against the Pistons was a blowout. The Knicks, they were up by like 20, 30 points pretty much the entire fourth quarter. McBride didn't sub out until there was about three minutes left in the fourth quarter. Um, and that was when they were up by like 30. Like most, most coaches would have had their starters out of the game probably at, at the beginning of the fourth quarter. But Tom Thibodeau is not a normal coach. He, he will play his guys until the final few minutes, even in a blowout. So McBride probably plays 40-plus minutes here. Like uh, I think that's very likely to happen. It's a great matchup against the Raptors. The Raptors defensively have been terrible this season, especially as of late. I want to say like over their last 10 games, they, they're like bottom five in defensive rating. So this is a spot where the Knicks should be able to put up a lot of points. We know McBride's going to play a ton of minutes. His usage rate, probably not going to be great playing alongside Jalen Brunson and DiVincenzo. But because McBride plays so many minutes... He will get some minutes with Brunson off the floor, and I definitely I do expect McBride to be really productive in the minutes he plays with Brunson off the floor, and he'll probably get you know maybe eight I want to say uh, probably not maybe like 10, 11 minutes without Brunson, so he should be pretty productive in those minutes. And if we look over his last four games as a starter, 
you know, in terms of his scoring, he has been able to score the ball pretty well. Last four games, he's had 13, uh, 26, 11, and 29 points. In terms of assists, he's only had two, three, three, and four assists over his last four games, but he has averaged about five and a half uh, potential assists per game. So the assist opportunities have been there. Um, and especially, like I said, with Brunson off the floor, when he gets some minutes without Brunson, he'll be the primary ball handler in those minutes. So he should really be able to rack up some assists in those minutes. I like the points. I like points plus assists the most for Miles McBride here. Um, his his PRA line, I, I took that last slate. It was at 20 and a half. It's at 22 and a half today. I don't like that as much. I think I like points plus assists the most. Um, with this, you're pretty much hoping that McBride, you know, if he goes over his points prop, I think he's pretty likely to get three assists and go over points plus assists as well. I could see him going over points plus assists though and not going over PRA just because I don't think it's like a guarantee that he's able to grab four rebounds. He did have five rebounds last game, but the prior games, he really wasn't rebounding much. So I think if I was going to take a Miles McBride prop and over on him today, my favorite is points plus assist. The guy's just playing so many minutes right now. It's hard not to, you know, look at some of his overs when he's playing, you know, 40 plus minutes pretty much every single night, especially in a spot like this against Toronto. Really good matchup. Um, I, I do like this play, uh, you know, as well. So that'll be our second prop for tonight, guys. Miles McBride, uh, more than 18 and a half points plus assists. And then the third and final prop I like, another points plus assist prop. We're going to look at Scoot Henderson, 24 points plus assists. Like the over here as well for Scoot. So Scoot has seen a bigger role lately due to the absences of a lot of guys, you know, for this Blazers team. The Blazers have been, uh, you know, very injury depleted. If we look at who's out tonight, they don't have, um, they don't have Anthony Simons. They don't have Jeremy Grant. He's doubtful, so he's not expected to play. They still don't have Malcolm Brogdon. Um, they still don't have, I think they're still missing some other guys, you know, like Robert Williams is still out, but really the big ones are no Malcolm Brogdon, no Anthony Simons, Jeremy Grant's doubtful. Also, DeAndre Ayton is questionable. I think DeAndre Ayton did play last game, if I remember correctly, or maybe not. No, no, Ayton, or yeah, Ayton didn't play last game. So maybe DeAndre Ayton comes back today, but I don't think if DeAndre Ayton comes back, like that's horrible for Scoot. I, if honestly, it might be a good thing if Aiton's back because Scoot, he'll be able to get some assists, you know, feeding the ball to Aiton. I think it's also more likely that Portland keeps this game close if they have Aiton in the lineup. Either way, though, the role for Scoot Henderson is going to be massive here. Now, if you look at his last two games, those have both been without Anthony Simons. He's only gone over this points plus assist prop in one of those two games. However, you have to look a little bit more into it. So both those games, he was limited by foul trouble. He only played against Denver. He still went over this points plus assist prop, but he only played 28 minutes. He had five fouls in those 28 minutes. And then last game against the Rockets, he only played 24 minutes. He had five fouls in 24 minutes. So he has been limited by foul trouble now in back-to-back -back games. But when he's not in foul trouble, especially without Anthony Simons, we should see Scoot play a ton of minutes. You know, I think the Blazers right now, I mean, they're in development mode. Like they want to see what they have in some of their younger guys. And Scoop, you know, was their top draft pick. They probably want to try and see what they have in him, try and develop him. So I expect Scoot to have a really big role kind of just the rest of the season. Um, I expect him to play big minutes on a nightly basis. And I want to say that in their most recent blowout, I can't remember what game it was, but they were involved in a blowout recently. And Scoot was still out there even in the blowout. He played like the whole fourth quarter. Now, last game against Houston, they lost by 18. I want to pull up the, the rotations last game and see when Scoot subbed out last game because if they were down by 18, I assume that was kind of like a blowout scenario. So let's see here. So Scoot played, let's see. Yeah, Scoot played even in the blowout. So he subbed in, he subbed back in in the fourth quarter with six and a half minutes left and played the final six and a half minutes. Um, he played the fourth quarter with Delano Bay and Tamani Kamara, Chris Murray, Scoot, and and Ryan Rupert, or Ray and Rupert, who subbed in with like two minutes left. So I think, honestly, I think even if this game is like not competitive, I think Scoot probably still plays in a blowout. Um, they've played him in blowouts this season. I like the matchup though a lot here against Atlanta. Atlanta defensively, they've been a bad defensive team this season. Atlanta also plays at a fast pace. The matchup's really good here for Scoot. The role has been amazing the last two games without Anthony Simons. His usage rate the last two games is up to 33%. Now, for the whole season, Scoot has had about a 25% usage rate. For the last two games without Anthony Simons, 33% usage rate for Scoot. Now, again, both those games were without DeAndre Ayton. So maybe if Ayton comes back, you'll see Scoot lose a little bit of usage. But Scoot's still going to be the primary point guard when he's on the floor. He's going to handle the ball a ton without Anthony Simons. So those assist numbers, 
should definitely be there. I think for as a, from a scoring perspective, this is a matchup where Scoot should be able to score against an Atlanta defense that, again, has not been good this season. And if we look at Scoot's potential assists the last two games, he's averaged 11 potential assists, and that's with him only averaging about 26 minutes per game because, like I said, Scoot has been limited by foul trouble in back-to-back games. He has still averaged 11 potential assists, even you know being limited by foul trouble. If Scoot isn't in foul trouble tonight, he could play like 34, 35 minutes. Um, and like I said, I think he might even play if it's a blowout. Um, they've shown a willingness to play Scoot even in blowouts. So there's a lot of reasons I think you know, we can look at this uh, points plus assist prop for Scoot Henderson. And I was looking at DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now on Draft, uh, DraftKings Sportsbook, they have this even line set at 24 and a half. We're getting it at 24 on prize picks, which doesn't seem like a big difference. Only half a, you know, half a point plus, plus assist. But on the off chance that Scoot finishes with 24 points plus assist, you know, that's not going to be a loss. It would just be a push. And if our other two plays hit, we would still get a 3x payout. Whereas if they bump this line up to 24 and a half, Scoot finishes with 24, well, it would be a loss. So, you know, every every point, half a point matters in this game. Um, so hopefully by the time, you know, I put this video up on YouTube, you guys will still be able to get this at 24 points plus assist. Even if it gets bumped up to 24 and a half, I still think it's fine to play. Um, but that's what I'm liking for tonight, guys. Three picks, three early picks I'm liking. Taking a first look at the board, you know, around 11.30 a.m. Eastern time on Wednesday morning when I'm recording this video. Hopefully we can hit all three of these plays and make some money again on this slate. I appreciate you guys watching the video, though. As always, hit that like button down below if you did enjoy. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. Be sure to go check out Prize Picks as well, guys. If you're not signed up for Prize Picks yet, use that promo code NOAA. When you sign up, get your first deposit matched up to $100. Uh, but good luck, guys. Thanks for watching, as always. We'll see you in the next video.